So I've already went to AutoZone and I got my fix finder report from the OBD. Of course, I have a misfire. It's telling me to replace spark plug wires and spark plugs. Um, I just did that not too long ago. So I'm not gonna do that. But I don't know if you can tell, but my shit is running rough. Uh, the second page of this shows me that I have a misfire on cylinder seven. Yeah, see, I got my elbow on the uh, door panel and it's shaking the phone. Like, that's how rough my car is running right now. Anyway, uh, P0307 is cylinder seven misfire detected. Um, and then I also have anti-lock brake system. Uh, I don't even know what that is. I ain't worrying about that. What I'm worried about is this cylinder seven misfire. So, uh, 195,000 miles. 2007 Tahoe. I need to change my oil as well. This is my mileage. I'm right at almost 195,000. This is the first time I've ever had to change a um, coal pack. Um, so we're going to get to it. Sudden so seven. It's the one all the way at the back on the driver's side, which is cylinder seven. And here we are, stability track off. Got the flashing check engine light. That's what it looks like if you have a misfire. And it also runs rough as shit. Uh, especially when you come to a stop and you're about to pull off it runs really rough. Um, and also your transmission, well, I don't know about anybody else's, but my transmission is shifting pretty hard with this uh, this fault that's going on here. So this is it. So just looking at my engine, you can see it just sitting there just shaking. Uh, it should not be running like that. This is a misfire on cylinder seven. Which is all the way back here in the back. This is seven. So I'm about to replace that and uh, see what happens. Look how that thing just shaking. That's crazy. Misfire. two bolts this bolt this top bolt here and I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter socket if you can find one just saying uh, there's also a I'll show you on this number one cylinder but uh there's also a connector at the top Bottom bolt out. Well, uh, before I talk, take that top bolt off. I'm going to unhook this. And look, that's probably the problem right there. Well, part of the problem anyway. It's broke. So we'll take this top bolt out. And this connector here has a little tab on the back. Just pop it, pull it out. And here is number seven coil pack. 
I guess this is a part number on here. One two five seven three one nine zero. Not sure, but we'll find out when we get to the part store. Pretty easy. This is the part that's broke off. It don't look like it really affected anything, but it's, it's broke. I don't know if y'all can hear anything I just said because my hand was covering the speaker, the mic or whatever. Anyway, this is it. Cinder seven. And it's out of there. One, two, five, seven, three, one, nine, zero. All right, we're back with the part. Old one on the left, new one on the right, of course. Um, so this is a car quest part number EBC1787. This part came from Advanced Auto. Um, so what it looks like. So we back with the install at my 10 millimeter, which everybody can't find one of those. Uh, installation is reverse of removal. I'm gonna hook up my connector first. Get back here. I got my connector first. Actually, it goes this way. Here it snap. There you go. And mount this up. Hand start your bolts. First, and then the bottom. Use that ten millimeter. Tighten it up. I don't know if there's any torque specs on this or not. I'm just tightening it up just about how it was before I took it off and then you're going to plug up your spark plug wire back up that's snug So I'm back. Uh, the new coil did not remove my fault. So we kind of back to square one. I got two other things I can check, which is the um, the spark plug cables and the spark plugs themselves. Um, here I have two spark plugs. This spark plug. It's the one that came out of the number seven cylinder. This spark plug came out of the number one cylinder. As you can see, they look different. This one is black on the top. This one has, you know, somewhat of a white look on the top of it. So that could be the issue. Um, 
what I was going to do is swap both of these out and see if my fault moves. Um, I don't have an OBD, so I would have to go back to the store, get them to test it and everything again. So at this point, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to switch it and drive this to the store and get it tested or what. But uh, I'll let you all know, you know what I come up with. I changed the ignition coil. I changed the wires. I changed the spark plugs. Um, the misfire is still there. So what I did is I went on ahead and took my ignition coil rail off. And I took my valve cover off. And so as you can see, these are tight. All these rocker arms are tight. Uh, this is what this is five cylinder five. And then you've got cylinder seven. Look at that. This is cylinder seven here. This is cylinder seven. So this is where my collapsed lifter is. Um, you will see about getting that fixed. You see how that's loose. All these other ones are tight. See loose, oh loose booty. <laughs> Y'all bear with me, man. You know, I'm out here. I've never did this before. Never did anything. I'm gonna try to get that lifter uh, unstuck, and then I'm gonna send my computer off and get it um, get the AFM taken off of it and get it shipped back to me. I heard uh, LT1 swap, so somebody does that. So um, we'll see how that go. And um, I'm gonna do a little bit more work and then I'm gonna get back at it. All right, so I'm back. Kind of wanted to show y'all um, the tools that I had to use. So this bolt here, uh, this is what comes out of your um, ignition uh, coil rail. These are 10 millimeter bolts. And then I have these bolts here for the intake have been loosened up. I done took all these out. So I got my intake loose. She's about ready to come off. I gotta unhook all this stuff, uh, but I got it loose, so I did that already. Um, these bolts here are eight millimeter bolts. And for this valve cover, I got my valve cover over here. This valve cover, the bolts to take it off are eight millimeter. So, Kind of hard for me to record while I'm actually doing the work, but at least, at least I can show you all the tools that I used. Um, maybe I can help somebody out to make it a little bit faster or easier for them if they have to do this job. But uh, So the next thing will be is loosening everything up so that I can get this intake off. I got to take this fuel line apart here. I got my little tool for that. So let's get to it. Yeah, these bolts here to hold this uh, harness down, they are 10 millimeter bolts. And I can barely, can't even get that in. It's only 10 I got right now, so I just have to use the wrench. is a fuel line disconnect tool set. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be using. Part number 25043. And it says it's made for GMs 1989 to newer, 1990 to newer Ford, and some 1990 and newer Mazda vehicles. But 
we ain't worrying, we ain't worrying about them. Uh, so it says fix the 5 16th to 3 8 fuel line. So we're going to see how this goes. Uh, I've never really used it before, but we'll see. That's my fuel line right there that we're going to be disconnecting. All right, so the first thing is this fuel line, this right here, it's not a part of it. It's a clip. So you just pry back on the back of that and it comes out. Now, I just noticed something on the video. It tells you right there that this is a 3 8 well, it kind of looked like somebody actually marked that on mine, but, well, it's a 3.8. So, then we're going to take our tool, wrap it around there. Damn it. So, like I said, never did this before. And uh, I got it off though, but I had to, um, so what you have to do is put that tool in there and you press it in and you, and you press the fuel line as well. See like now it's back on there. And I'm gonna take my tool, try to attempt this on camera. Yeah, so you put it in there, it unlocks the clips. You push the fuel line towards you and then it pops out. And there's these little clips in there. That's what you're, what this tool is catching a hold of. And I know, I know I should have had a rag or something down there, but you know, it is what it is. I'll wipe it up. All right, we back, uh, I figured I would add this to the video um i actually just figured this out myself trying to take these injectors off injector um connectors off so it's kind of hard to get to like to figure it out but um so what you have to do is this little piece right here you will lift it up i'll go ahead and do this one too while i'm on camera so you just lift that up. And as you can see now, they're up. And you have to press in on this side and then pull it up, which is easy, but trying to figure it out is, it was a bitch. So then you're gonna take this, press on that. See, now I'm struggling again. <laughs> Press on that. Ah, bitch. Press. Let's try this one. Press here and lift. So it looked like it's time for the intake to come out. Hopefully I've disconnected everything I need to. Well, I already see something else that I didn't disconnect. This part right here. I don't know what this is or what it does, but I just disconnected it. So now we're gonna try to take the intake off. Look like one of my bolts is not all the way disconnected. One in the back, of course. That's what it seems like. Try 
probably would have been easier if I removed this um, alternator, but I didn't, so, oh well. There's one more hose back here. Actually, let's go into the brake booster right there. Get me a set of pliers and take that off. Anyway, intake is pretty much out. Just got to disconnect this here or on this end one. But uh, we get into it. All right, I got that brake booster um, hose uh, loose. And now the intake is out. Intake sitting down here on the ground. Got it out. That's what it looks like in here. Need to be cleaned up. Definitely gonna clean this up real good before I put everything back together. And replace this, uh, uh, the oil sending unit. That's one thing that's real hard to get to and they go bad a lot on these vehicles. But uh, we're gonna get back to it. So something I noticed uh, after I took the intake off, uh, of course it's definitely real dirty in here. But back here where I have the misfire at, sitting there seven, that uh, port or whatever it's called, it's full of oil. All the rest of them are, you know, it's oil caked up or whatever, but they're pretty dry considering, compared to this one. So I guess that's another indication of the issue that I'm having. Y'all get in the comment section and let me know because I don't know. Like, y'all help me out. I'm not a mechanic, but we're going to try this thing because I ain't got money to be paying nobody to do all this work. So we're going to learn as we go. See that? That's cylinder seven back there. All right, to uh, take these bolts here off, I'm using a 13. We're going to take those off, get that out of there so we can get to the lifters. That one was loose. Barely even touched it. This one was loose too. I've heard of that before, so it doesn't surprise me that they were loose. This uh bolt out for the uh what's that thing called for the oil sending unit it's a one and one sixteenth that I'm using to take that off sending unit here just replaced it not too long ago but while I got all this out I might as well go ahead and do it again while we got easy access
I uh, wish I would have got this on video, but I got number seven here. As you can see, it's not loose anymore. It's just like the rest of them. So what I had to do, I took this. As you can see on the ends, there is kind of messed up from me uh, putting it in here. So I put it in here, tapped it with a hammer, and it uncollapsed that, uh, it loosened up that, uh, that lifter. So like I said, now we're still on seven. Both of these are seven. And I just gotta torque it down now, but it's not moving just like the rest of them. So I got the valve cover cleaned up now. I got my Blum. Can't remember what that stands for, but I got it cleaned up. Y'all can see that it was all messed up before. I'm not gonna finish today, but I need to put everything back together. And I'm going to take this computer off and I'm gonna send it, I already started taking it off. I took these two connectors off, this one and this one. Um, so I'll show you how, it, how they come off. Cause it took me a minute to figure it out. So that's this clamp right here. Or, little door or whatever you call it. Once you get it loose, then you turn it all the way back that way and it disconnects that connector and you pull it off. This little red tab here. Open it up and you press in on this part and then it just unlocks this. Then you're able to, oh yeah, it unlocks it, you push it, and yeah. there we go. Yeah, so once you get these uh, connectors off, these two connectors, then you got these tabs up here that uh, you have to disconnect. Well, I just broke one. See that? Guess it's just old and dry and brittle. So, I got one left. But just take that out and you slide it right out. And then here's your computer. ECM, ECU, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, I'm going to take this and ship it off to um, LT1 swaps and uh, get them to remove the AFM. So do an AFM delete on it. Uh, it's $50, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I don't wanna have this issue again. So I'm doing the delete and I do have my chisel set now. You know, work smarter, not harder. Um, I'm doing the, the AFM delete, so I was told to um, to chisel out these gaskets here because that's for the AFM uh, lifters. Uh, like I said, I'm not a professional, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know exactly <laughs> what I'm doing, but I'm trying to save a little money. And uh, this is recommended by Craze Performance. Uh, I gotta give credit where it's due. So I'm open up my chisel pack here. Like I said just to cut these off pretty much. Actually, I should get some soft to lay this on.
a Vlom modification. And all of these little passages are open now. So I went back and cleaned up where I removed those gasket pieces off for this modification. So uh, it look a little bit better now, at least for my liking. Um, so I'm get ready to go ahead and reinstall this thing. Look at all that crap. Piece of shit ass AFM system. Wind blowing like I don't know what they hopefully y'all can hear me. Uh, this is the flying modification part. This is it. What it does is it goes down in um in that back piece which I'll show you goes down in there and it blocks off that uh, passage for the oil. All right, so this, uh, mm, that's my socket, my bad. This is actually the Vlom modification part. So it goes in here. As you can see, it doesn't go all the way down. So you have to grab a socket or something and a hammer and tap it down in there. And what you wanna do is just make sure it's down enough to where you can get your um, your fuel sending, I mean, not your fuel sending, your oil sensor in there. So that's how you do that. And what it does, it blocks this passage off right here for the oil flow. And as you can see, I got my oil sending unit here. Oil sensor, oil pressure sending unit, oil pressure sensor, whatever you call it. And now it actually screws down in there. And all I gotta do is just tighten it up now and Go ahead and add this connector. Well, actually, I need to tighten it up before I add the connector. But and that's that. All right, she back, y'all. I got my baby back. She running all smooth. She dirty because she been sitting out here, just sitting in the driveway waiting on me to fix her. Got the computer back today. As y'all can see, there's no um, no lights on, no check engine light. I need to change the oil, uh, but she running good. None of that light last time where I had all the um, shivering and shaking and going on. I had the check engine light was flashing, uh, but we good now. Got the computer back from, I think his name is Brendan, over at LT1 Swaps. So y'all saw this engine running last time. It was all shaking and shivering and going on. Got my computer ran. She running good now. And man, I didn't realize uh, the difference that deleting that AFM would make. Uh, once I've deleted that, man, like, I mean, having V8 power all the time, it is amazing. I didn't realize how much power I was losing, man. But she back, my baby is back. That's my baby. I can ride now. Yes, sir.